Hi, my name is Mark Rutinger from Industrial Control. We're a factory automation distributor in West Michigan. And I want to demonstrate today the uh, MicroScan QX Hawk and some of the features. I had to do an application here and I wanted to get on video of reading this can with a dot peen uh, 2D barcode on it. Uh, the requirement was to run it at 100 RPMs. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't miss any reads as we're spinning around here. So I'll set up this little demo here to uh, validate that the MicroScan QX Hawk could do this. Now what I have here, just to explain the components that I have, I have a QX Hawk from MicroScan, which is a 1D uh, linear barcode reader and a 2D barcode reader. It's not a vision system, it's purely just a barcode reader. So this QX Hawk is really designed to read direct part marking, DPMs, which is basically a two-dimensional barcode that's etched right on the can here. Uh, you can do it with a laser mark or you could do dot peen or chemical etch. Uh, in this case, I have a 2D dot peen mark on here. And it's actually a poorly uh, done uh, barcode because it's got some slant to it, which you don't want. It's also got um, underprint, which is where the cells are are too small compared to the spaces in between the cells. So it makes it a little bit more challenging. I wanted to run this uh, test on a can that was bad, uh, borderline bad. So, so I've got the QX Hawk here. I've got my servo system running at 100 RPMs. I also wanted to have an external count. So I have a PLC here, just a little Panasonic PLC and touchscreen, uh, where I've got a banner engineering sensor and a screw on this table going around. So I am looking at the screw with photo eye, bringing that back here. So they have this externally giving me a good count. On the laptop here, I've got MicroScan's uh, software, which is called ESP. It's free software from MicroScan uh, that you can download. And it runs all their, uh, their barcode readers. So linear barcode laser readers all the way to the imagers that we have here. So that's what I'm using here to look at my counts so that my read counts, I can compare them to my external count, see how we're doing. So, I let this test run overnight. Uh, we had about 130,000 turns on this servo table uh, last night. And we had about 135 reads with the uh, MicroScan QX Hawk. So what that tells me is as this can spin it around, I'm actually getting a couple reads because I have a dual core processor uh, inside here so I can multitask. So I've got the QX Hawk set up right now to take a rapid capture where I'm taking multiple images and processing them after the fact. So it is possible that I am getting, when this barcode comes into the field of view, that I am getting several reads. And that's why I think we've got an extra 5,000 reads more, more than our counts are. I know that the counts are working. I validated that the other day and got a one-to-one -one ratio. So along with the dual core processor in this microscan, we also have uh, in it is a liquid lens. It gives us the ability to, to just set this up dial in electronically through the software here and focus. So I can focus from anywhere from an inch to infinity. Uh, which is really good because with this can here, we have a small can, we might have a 5 inch can, 6 inch can, 8 inch can. We can just change that liquid lens without moving the camera around. So that's an advantage that we have with the liquid lens. So we get the speed, we get the liquid lens, we also have the package. It's a DC um, powered unit here, but it has a rating IP67 rating sealed, uh, which will keep all the dust and debris out of there. Uh, some of the older cameras don't have good sealing. We've had issues with that. So this is gonna be a new addition to us uh, for the IP67 in those tough environments. Well, we're overall, uh, with the counts that we're having, very, very good on a quarterly mark can so let's take a look at it. Uh, we'll zoom in here and take a look at some of the exact details of how we set this up. So again here we're going to show you some of the software in the MicroScan uh, software package called ESP. And we're showing you right now the barcode, uh, 2D barcode here. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, what this barcode looks like here. So it's a two-dimensional barcode and it's got a green box around it because it is being red uh, but I can just tell by the these pins these cells are spaced out more so than the spaces in between so the underprint is there and there is some skew it's hard to see on here because of the green box around it but if we take a look at uh, how we program the software 
we're going to go ahead and back out here. We're in what's called the easy mode right now. <clears throat> and we'll kind of start from scratch here. We're going to hit stop. And at this point, first thing you do in the easy mode, you can see that there's a little cross on there. That's a target that uh, is being displayed on the can, so you kind of get it aligned. And uh, this is where you can kind of see where what your image is going to look like with the light. So we're going to get it somewhat in the center of the screen there. And then at that point, uh, we can jump right into what's called uh, calibrate. So we're going through a calibration right now. And this is going to adjust the liquid lens. It's also going to adjust the lighting and the shutter speed. So it's going through right now testing all kinds of different scenarios. It's going to come back with its recommendation. Now with 2D, typically you're going to want a darker image. Uh, you don't want a super high contrast image. Uh, all the time. I found that darker image works better and even a little blurred. Uh, blurred images work a little better. They tend to uh, cause those cells to uh, be more defined, especially with pin stamp. It's hard for the reader to uh, determine where the locate bar is uh, because of the, all the pin stamp. So blurring it will create more of a locate bar. So now we're done with our calibration and we can kind of just see what it's doing here and it's found the barcode. The next step is we got to go ahead and just hit learn. So we're going to hit learn and at this point it's learned. That box turns green. We're all set. It now understands that I have a uh, 12 by 12 uh, 2D data matrix or 16 by 16 or whatever it might be. So now we're just going to come down to the bottom here and check on the fact that we want it to look at decodes per second and then we're going to hit test. So we're kind of running an analysis now of uh, how many barcodes we're getting might be difficult to see there but we are running uh, 29 and try to zoom in here for you would be the rate that we're getting is we're kind of bouncing around 24 so you can see right here is the number I'm trying to see is the number of decodes per second uh, and then we also have the decode uh, what's actually printed in there so that, that's very, very good. 20, anything over 20 decodes per second uh, means that I'm pushing 50 milliseconds or less on the total processing time. Uh, so that's excellent because when we spin our can, every revolution at 100 uh, RPMs comes out to uh, 0.6 seconds. So we really need to get this uh, running as fast as possible here. So. so we'll back out and we'll show you some other parts of the system that we have. So here we're zoomed up on the 2D barcode. I want to talk about some of the, the problems with this can that I was running. So here the locate bar has got some curvature to it, uh, which makes that very difficult to read, more so than average. And then also we've got some uh, cell issues here. The white cells and the spaces in between there should be equal, and they're not quite equal. So that, that causes issues for us when we look at uh, trying to read these with these imagers. So I hope you enjoyed some of the uh, discussions we've had here on this example. Uh, my impression here with the QX Hawk uh, is very, very good. I've run the older Hawkeye product uh, for some time now, very successful. This QX Hawk, though, uh, is really answering the call with a dual core processor and a liquid lens. So we're pretty excited about this new addition to MicroScan. And again, Mark Armitier from Industrial Control. And it'll be reached at mark at industrialcontrol.com or you can find us on the web at www.industrialcontrol.com. Thank you.